Hello and welcome to Paula Armstrong Ceramics. So I realised that I do a lot of videos that are all about simple beginners makes um, and some tips and tricks for doing different techniques in clay, very much on the making side. So it's all about how you handle the clay and different ways of building things. And I thought for this video, I would just do a really quick video of talking through different options for finishing pieces. So different ways of um, handling the piece that you've made after it's been bisque fired to get different kinds of finishes. Now I'm just going to talk through them in this one, but if you want me to go into a bit more detail on any of the different things that I talk about, please let me know in the comments and I will use that as information to make a new video, particularly on that topic. So there are lots of ways. As there is with making with clay, there are lots of ways with finishing your pieces. Um, the main ones that I use in my studio, um, most people will glaze their pieces. So they finish a piece with the glazes. Now, I buy commercial brush-on glazes. So I buy lots of little pots of lots of different colours. Because for me, in the studio, I like to have lots of variety for the students to choose from. There are pros and cons to these glazes. Um, obviously, I can get a massive range um, from lots of little pots, but you have to paint them on with paint brushes. And the pro for that is the fact that you can do all sorts of different colors and you can get really detailed work within your glazes because you're using a paintbrush and you can do very fine work if you want to spend the time to do that. The con for that as against something like dipping glazes, where you have a big bucket full of glaze and you put your piece straight into it and then pull it out and it's glazed. There's obviously time. This is much slower to brush on. You need to do two or three coats with most of these glazes. So it's not just painting it once, you're painting it two and three times for each piece. So if you're looking at speed for something, then dipping is definitely the way to go over painting. But if you're looking for different kinds of colours in different places on the piece and having almost a painterly effect, then the brush on glazes are perfect. They're absolutely brilliant. They are glazes. They will react like glazes. So if you're looking for something that's a bit like a painting, then these are probably not what you're after because these will move around. They're fluid, so they'll blend and they'll move. And a lot of the reactions, the colours in the glazes, are actually from a chemical reaction with the heat in the kiln. So you can't know exactly what you're going to get if you layer things up or mix some of the glazes together. It changes how the chemical reactions help or happen in the kiln. So um, you need to test. If you're going to do any kind of mixing with things, test to make sure the firing temperature stays the same and it does what you want it to do. You can do that with test tiles or you can do it on little tester pieces. It's up to you. Do be aware though, if you layer glazes up, you can make them more fluid so they can run and stick to your kiln shelf. So watch for that one. Maybe put a cookie underneath them. I'll leave that one with you. Um, the glazes in the pots are generally not the colour they're going to turn out if they are ones that change um, with the kind of heat in the kiln. I'm just trying to find one that's a really obvious kind of one. Here we go. You can see the pot here. The glaze colour, as you can see, is kind of an orangey red colour, and the colour that it comes out is a blue. So don't expect your glazes in the pot to necessarily look like the colours they're going to turn out. Um, again, test this. You can use the pictures and the samples as examples to get you going and you can choose your glazes based on them. But you need to know that they're fired on a white clay body and that they're fired to a certain temperature with a certain program. And they don't generally tell you exactly how they've fired them. So it can be a bit tricky to come up with the same result on your own clay in your own kiln. So it's worth, again, testing them out before you use them. Um, you can do, like I say, little test tiles um, for that or tester pieces. That would, they both work really well. Tester pieces are almost better because they react um, as they would on um, a piece that you've built, whereas test tiles are very flat. So they don't have the kind of vertical movement that 
you would have in a glaze on a piece of work. If what you're after is more of a painterly look um, and you want to actually like paint a picture on a piece, then I would suggest that you look at something like underglazes. Now underglazes are exactly what they sound like. They are colours. They're basically just pigments that have been mixed in a medium so that you can paint them on. So they're very like paints. These are like paints in that you can mix them and you can get the mix of the colours the same as a paint. Um, and you paint them on. They're what they use, if you've ever been to a pottery painting cafe anywhere, these are what they use in the cafe because they're very stable. They stay where you put them. They're pretty much the colours they're going to turn out. Some of them do change a bit in the kiln, especially depending on the temperature that they're fired, but earthenware, these are pretty stable um, and pretty much what you paint on is what the end product will be. So they're very good if you want to do like literally a painting of something on a piece of clay. Um, you also, because they're under glazes, you have to put them under a glaze. So you need a transparent glaze over the top. So you need to consider what colour your clay is that you're working on. Because if you're working like me with a buff coloured clay, that's going to be the colour of the background of the picture that you paint. If you want a white background, you need to either put white slip on the clay before you bisque fire it, or lay down a layer of white under glaze first and then paint on top of it. Again, try it out, test it, see which one you like best, see which method you like best. If you're working directly on white clay, that's fine, you obviously don't have to worry about that, or you don't mind having a warm colour or a different colour as your background, or I mean, you can use these on black clay, but you have to really test to see how strong the colours are and how much they'll come out on black, much like paints. They're a bit watercolory, um, although I suppose gouache is probably more accurate in terms of how they how they react when you're using them. Um, but you can use them very much like paints. Just make sure you seal over the top with a glaze to fix them to the clay body. You can also get underglaze in pencils. So if you'd like to draw, so you can use like a drawing and then do um, a wash with the underglaze paints or do the wash first and draw on top actually is probably the better order to do it. Um, as well. So they, these are quite good because you can get them in different colours. They're just like colouring pencils. So again, you can draw outlines and things with these. So if you, if you like that idea of being able to draw on your clay, these are great. And then the other thing that I have generally available for people to finish pieces with in the studio are oxides. Now oxides are metals, uh, metal oxides. Um, the ones I have here are black iron oxide manganese, cobalt, copper, and rutile. I find manganese is my favourite. It's one of the easiest ones to use. Iron is fairly easy as well. Um, cobalt and copper are very messy and very powdery. They don't stay put very well when you paint them on, but they do give some beautiful colours. And copper under a glaze will be green. Whereas if you do it without the glaze on top, it's kind of a grey, blacky kind of colour. And you can use them to show up texture. So if you're doing sculptural pieces, oxides are great because you can wash them on over the top and then wash off. And what is left is the, de the dark colours are all left in the depths of the textures. So they really show up textures very nicely. So you can see here where it's been washed on and then I've used a sponge and it's just left it in the deep parts. This is manganese, this colour here. This is the one that I like. That side is manganese that's been sponged on. So you can use a sponge and just sponge on and it gives you a bit of a te spongy texture to it. And I don't know how well you can see on the camera there, but there's a bit of a metallic shine to this. And that's what manganese will do if it's slightly overloaded. So it will go back to a slightly metallic finish. As far as I know, it's the only one that does that. Um, it's of the ones that I have, it's certainly the only one that does that. And then I've also done a bit of a wash of manganese um, mixed into a slip and also with a glaze over the top on that one. And that's just painted on in a pattern and that side has the glaze over the top and this side doesn't. 
If you put a glaze over the top of the oxides, it can wash them out a bit. So it's almost like it eats away into the oxides so that they disappear in the final piece. So you have to be a little bit heavier handed if you're gonna put the glaze over the top. Again, as with all things in clay, test it first if it's an important piece. Make sure it's gonna work for you as best you can anyway. So those are kind of the options that I have generally available in the studio for finishing pieces for people. Like I said, if there's one you're particularly interested in, please leave me a message in the comments and I'll do a video on that particular part of it. I'll go into a bit more depth about how they work and what we do at the studio with those. So I hope that was kind of helpful and um, I will see you again soon.